In the name of God, the merciful, the beneficent, thanks be to God Almighty. God's peace and prayers be upon the prophet, peace be upon him. Our Lord, decide the truth between us and our folk, for thou art the best of those who make decisions. Welcome to a new episode of I Love You, My Lord. We'll continue our search for the best acts that God loves, whether through the words of God, the words of the prophet, peace be upon him, or the companion's questions about the acts that God Almighty most loves to see, so that we can perform them. Everyone's searching for those acts that God loves to perform before God Almighty and to please him with. And today, I'll talk about the acts that God loves the most, and the prophet, peace be upon him, mentioned this act as well. An act in which we can't find its effect on our lives, and if we can't trace its effect, this means that it hasn't been performed yet in the way that God Almighty loves. A big portion of Muslims are totally neglecting it, and another big portion are not considering it to be one of their main priorities. Sometimes they perform it in the way God loves, and sometimes they're too busy to do so. But when they do, it's only a projection of God's commands and our obligations. Today's act is prayers. So regarding prayers, let's put our hands on our hearts and visualize what we can possibly hear about prayers that we don't already know. Nothing brings more joy than hearing new information about praying. I ask you today to give me only 20 minutes of your time to deliver you a certain vision in which we may revive the spirit of prayer. And if anyone revives this act, which is the most pleasing to God, he will revive his soul and it will be reborn again. Let me tell you, with extreme honesty, that our program is based on contemplating and scrutinizing the words of God, the words of the prophet, and the acts of the ancestors. I asked myself, after we agreed that our series is based on contemplation, why God Almighty loves the call for prayer and why he asked us to repeat the call for prayer. Is it related to praying? Why does God love it and why does he love us to repeat it? Why did God ask us to kneel in prayer when kneeling and prostrating are almost the same in bowing before God? Is it only an additional act or are there certain feelings we must attain when we kneel that please God and causes him to boast of us to the angels? God loves the act of prayer to the extent that he made the prophet peace be upon him tell us that it would be the first thing God will ask about on judgment day. The first thing that a slave will be judged on during Judgment Day is prayer, and if it was righteous, then so will all his acts be as well. Do you realize the importance of prayers to God when he made it the first thing to ask us about? Do you know that if you pray in the way God loves, you will enter paradise? So how do prayers affect the rest of our lives? The scholars said that prayers will organize our lives and make us virtuous people with God and others. We must realize how much God loves this act. We must realize the value of this act and the importance of including it in our circle of interests. God loves prayers to the extent that he made a moment during prostrating which is called the night journey or ascension of the hearts, to be the closest moment during a person's prayers to God Almighty. The issue deserves our attention today to know how we must perform prayers in the way God loves, when the case is, I love you, my Lord. Do you know why God loves prayer and why he made us perform it five times a day? Because during the moment of prayers, God will reflect his glory on the hearts of his followers, and change them and enrich them with his traits. We agreed previously that the act that God loves the most is to adopt his almighty traits or manners. So one of the prayer secrets is that God blesses us with his traits when he looks into our hearts during prayer. Therefore, God loves us to be with him very much. The prophet, peace be upon him, said as al Termothy narrated, God ordered you to pray, so if you look straight forward, God will look at his worshipper's face. His face means his heart. And God will never turn away from his worshipper until he, the worshipper, turns his face away. God looks into our hearts and when he does, he changes them. The scholars say that the heart is like a mirror. If one stands in light, he will reflect it. 
and Allah's is the sublime similitude. God has a great secret in changing the traits of our hearts from envy into love, from hatred into helping others, from anger into compassion for creatures, and foolishness into wisdom and deliberation. The poem also said, A drop from the flux of your generosity would fill the earth with goodness. A little drop of your generosity would flood the earth. A drop from the flux of your generosity would fill the earth with goodness, and a look from the eyes of your satisfaction would turn the polytheist into a follower. God loves prayers because when a person stands before God Almighty continuously, his heart will gain many of God Almighty's traits. God was looking into our hearts to reflect his glory and to change us, and this is for our interest because this is what you love and what pleases you. While our hearts weren't aware, instead they were focusing on other things. Let's repent to God. This issue deserves our strong consideration today to learn about prayer in I love you, my Lord. The first state that God loves to see while we're praying, and don't be surprised, is our reaction to the call for prayers. Most of us think that the prayer starts at the time of performing it, and this is a big mistake that people are unfocused when they pray. Prayers begin when we first hear the call for prayer, and our response to the call of the Most Gracious, the Almighty. Let's go back in time to when we were first born with the mercy of God, and when they used to recite the call for prayers in our right ears according to the Sunnah of the Prophet, peace be upon him, to implement the call of instinct and the covenant between us and God. People call for prayers in the baby's ear to make it the first thing he ever hears when he's born, so they call for prayers in the right ear and recite in the left to live with this covenant, God is the greatest. Let's contemplate why we hear the call for prayers. Calling for prayer is a man who speaks to God, not only an announcer for us to pray, especially in the first part of the call for prayer, God is the greatest. Who does the caller announce to that God is the greatest? It's to God, not to us. When the caller announces that God is the greatest, it's as if God is reciting to us the voice of conscience like the person who discloses to God, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. I bear witness that there is no prophet of God but Muhammad. God loves us to repeat the call for prayers in this moment as if we confirm his words and believe in them. We must also bear witness that there is no God but God and we bear witness that there is no prophet but Muhammad. We prepare our hearts. God loves us to invoke him after calling for prayers and pray upon the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Prophet Muhammad said, if you hear the call for prayers, you must repeat it and pray upon me afterwards. Let's pray upon the prophet, peace be upon him, and let's recognize his favors, because without him, we would never realize God and know how to pray. Were you aware that if one beseeches God to reward the prophet with the highest level in paradise, the prophet will intercede for him on judgment day? Ask God to reward me, the prophet, with the highest level in paradise, and whoever asks God to reward me with it, he will be granted the intercession. God loves us to respond to the call for prayers and invoke God for the sake of the prophet, peace be upon him, because God will be pleased to have us with him on judgment day. As long as we remember the Prophet in life, he will remember us and intercede for us on Judgment Day. That's why when the ancestors heard the call for prayer while they were growing their lands and in their fields, they would drop their axes and their tools and go and pray. Welcome back. So we've repeated the call for prayer in the way God loves and restored the covenant with him. Let's move to the next step, which is ablution, and it's the core of prayers and apart from it at the same time. Many Orientalists from other religions who research Islam ask the Muslims about ablution. 
So many of us would respond by saying that it's because Islam is a hygienic religion and because we maintain cleanliness while we're praying to God. And that's a great answer, but it's not sufficient because it's a superficial explanation. There is an internal meaning in our feelings that God loves to see inside us during ablution. We will identify the meaning when we realize why God loves ablution. Humans in their nature commit mistakes, and these mistakes pile like layers of dust on the heart, and the heart is like a mirror. So if one stands before God, he's supposed to reflect the light of God Almighty. Therefore God loves ablution because he loves him to remove those layers between us and him, and this will not benefit us from prayer and will prevent our hearts from being touched by God Almighty. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that he who performs ablution will emerge clear of all his sins. When he said, upon washing his face every sin he looks upon will be cleared away with the last drop of water. Upon washing his hands, every sin his hands committed will be cleared away with that last drop of water. Upon washing his feet, every sin he walked towards will be cleared away with that last drop of water until he's purified from all sins. God loves us to realize that ablution is not only a cleansing process in respect to God, instead it's a purifying act or process from the barriers that stand between us and God because of the sins that pile up on the heart, which is like a mirror. So when one stands before God, he can reflect God's light. That's why the invocation of going to the mosque is, may God enlighten my vision, my hearing, my words, and my insight. God Almighty wants to enlighten us, and we will not be enlightened until our hearts, which are like those mirrors, reflect God's light when he looks upon us. That's why I know a friend of mine who is always performing ablution even when there's no prayer because he feels that God is purifying him from his sins. He says that he likes to live with God without sins by performing ablution. When Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, entered paradise, he heard the footsteps of our blessed Bilal. So when the Prophet descended, he told him that he heard his footsteps in paradise and he asked him why he'd entered paradise. Bilal answered, What I know about myself is that I never ruined my ablution until I performed ablution and prayed to God. That's why God made him one of the people in paradise because he always performed ablution and pursued purity. And praise be to the Lord, God loves ablution to the extent that he asked us to say after ablution, I ask you, my Lord, to make me one of the repentant ones. We repeated after the call for prayers in the way that God loves. We performed the ablution and we felt during performing it that God is purifying our sins because he's removing the barriers that we built between us and God Almighty. But imagine if we pray after one or two hours of hearing the call for prayer. The most important thing in prayer, which I may end this episode with, is to pray on time. When the prophet was asked about the acts that God loves the most, he said, praying punctually. Life's hectic, and everyone's busy with his work, business, or trips, but we must answer God's call for prayers on time. Worship at fixed times have been enjoined on the believers. God loves us to perform prayers on time because we are a priority to God and we are the purpose for creating the universe. God loves to be our priority in return. So when you pray late, this means that there are a lot of things more important than God, although God made us his priority. Paradise was created for us. The hellfire was created for those who hurt us. The prophets were sent for our sakes. God manifested himself in many forms and traits in life for us to enjoy his presence. We are the ones whom the universe is about and God made us the center of this universe. I know a person called Yakut, praise be to the Lord. He used to rush to prayers when he heard the call, but he was a heavy sleeper and faced a problem with the daybreak prayers. Before the mobile phones were available, his friends used to call him at his house and wake him for prayer, and this used to bother his family a lot and created problems for him. So days passed and he couldn't wake up to go pray because his friends couldn't find a way to wake him up, so if one of them called him from outside, he might not hear them. 
Therefore, he decided to attend a lesson about performing prayer on time. He heard the sheikh saying that one must find a way to pray on time because we must rush to answer God's call to prayer. So what did Yakut do? He lived on the first floor, so he agreed with his friends to tie his hand with a rope and hang it from the window, and he hung a lamp on the end of the rope to prevent it from going inside his room again, in case he flipped in bed, in order for his friends to pull the rope from outside to wake him for daybreak prayer. When he woke up, he placed a pillow under his sheets and jumped from the window to go pray so as not to bother his family and cause problems. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said about God's love for praying on time, Verily, God and his angels pray on those who are the first to pray. God prays upon us, and his prayers are merciful to those who rush to prayer. I love you, my Lord, by rushing to prayer when I hear the call, and never giving anything priority in life over you. O oh my Lord, you are the greatest and most precious in my life. I will leave the entire universe behind me and declare that I love you, my Lord. I hasten unto thee, my Lord, by praying on time. I ask the Lord to assist us in remembering him, to thank him, and to succeed in worshipping him. I ask you to look upon us and heal our hearts, conceal our flaws and enlighten our visions and bodies. So whenever we stand before you to judge us, you'll be satisfied with what you see. So after this show, when you hear that call for prayer, go and pray, be punctual and say, I love you, my Lord. I'll see you next time and thanks for watching. And until we meet again, peace be upon you.